Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I am your host, Eric Christensen, pharmacist. Uh, Definitely go track me down at LinkedIn, connect with me there. You can also shoot me an email message at reallifepharmacology.com where you can also subscribe and get email updates when we've got a new episode or new things coming out for sure. So, which I am really excited about a new uh, drug interaction book I'm putting together. So, uh, stay tuned to that and you can find the link to that at meded101.com slash store when that's out in around uh, the 1st of uh, January in 2020 is my goal. So, uh, by the end of January 2020, that, that drug interaction book should be out. Uh, anyway, let's get into the uh, drug we're going to talk about today. And that is fluoxetine. So I went uh, into a general overview regarding uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You can go back, um, get a little bit more broad view of uh, this class of medication in general if you like. Uh, I wanted to uh, break these down further because there are differences when we're you know determining whether we're going to select uh, one SSRI versus another. So I want to highlight some of those differences uh, today for sure. So uh, SSRI, obviously it can increase uh, basically the effects of serotonin within the brain, uh, which helps manage depression, anxiety. Uh, these drugs have uh, been shown to be helpful in OCD, P- PTSD, uh, some eating disorders as well. So lots of potential clinical uses, which is why you see fluoxetine and a lot of the other uh, SSRIs so frequently in in practice. Of course, the box warning is a class effect, so increased risk of suicidal thinking and behavior. Uh, That boxed warning does uh, remain in effect there. Adverse drug reactions, uh, again, kind of across the board with SSRIs, you've got sexual dysfunction, Uh, that serotonin syndrome risk, uh, again, extremely low, does not happen in practice hardly ever. Uh, I mean, I've only seen or heard of of really a a couple of cases. Um, Not that it isn't something we shouldn't pay attention to or or be on the lookout for, but again, just in in context, it is uh, extremely rare, not something that you're going to see on a a weekly basis or monthly or or anything like that. It's it's less common than that uh, in most situations. Uh, Fluoxetine specifically, uh, GI upset, nausea, that that can happen um, with this one. Sertraline tends to have a little bit more of that GI upset and spe- more specifically diarrhea maybe than, than fluoxetine does. Um, one unique thing about fluoxetine uh, in and amongst the SSRIs, I would say it tends to be a little bit more on the activating side. So if you've got a patient that struggles with insomnia already, we might lean away from fluoxetine in favor of another uh, antidepressant or another SSRI. Okay, uh, dosage forms. So here's a unique thing with fluoxetine. There actually uh, used to be, I believe it's been discontinued now. I haven't seen it in, in years, um, but there used to be a once weekly dose for fluoxetine. Okay, and one of the reasons that they could get away with this, it didn't really gain much in, in popularity, I don't think, or I don't recall it ever gaining much um, use. Uh, the reason it can have a once weekly dose is because the half life of fluoxetine is significantly long. Okay, so that is different from a lot of the other SSRIs, and it has uh, the longest half life of all SSRIs. Okay, so that allows us to potentially dose this less frequently. So if a patient misses a dose or two of fluoxetine, which certainly can happen in real life, um, it is less likely to kind of interrupt um, their concentrations and and their levels as much as, you know, missing a a dose of a shorter acting agent, uh, maybe like paroxetine, for example. Okay. So that's one important point regarding the pharmacokinetics and the longer half-life of fluoxetine. Another situation where this may impact our patients 
is if we're tapering down or tapering off of an SSRI. So again, let's take paroxetine as, as a potential example here. Paroxetine has a shorter half-life compared to fluoxetine with a really long half-life. When you've got a really long half-life, you tend to have more of a self-tapering type effect because those blood concentrations drop more slowly because of a longer half-life. So what this means in clinical practice is you potentially could be a little bit more aggressive with tapering down and off fluoxetine than you would with paroxetine, potentially, because it has that fluoxetine has that self-tapering uh, type effect. And in the setting of we abruptly discontinue a medication too quickly, we can run into discontinuation syndrome with uh, basically any of the SSRIs. So again, fluoxetine might help um, to kind of minimize that, that discontinuation syndrome, um, you know, kind of those, those withdrawal symptoms of, of the drug. People can be anxious, nauseous. Um, those are, are two prominent symptoms of, of kind of this uh, discon discontinuation syndrome. Pharmacokinetics-wise, another really important thing with fluoxetine is um, it is primarily broken down by CYP2D6. So in pharmacogenomics, uh, we think about this enzyme breaking down the drug. If we've got patients that are slow metabolizers at the enzyme CYP2D6, they are more likely to experience higher concentrations and more effects. Um, potentially higher risk of toxicity with fluoxetine. If they are a rapid metabolizer, we would likely um, not see a benefit or be less likely to see a benefit because the body is naturally chewing up that drug much quicker and deactivating it uh, in a much quicker fashion if they are a rapid metabolizer at CYP2D6. So let's take a quick break from our sponsor, and then we'll wrap up with uh, drug interactions. So if you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material, uh, NAPLEX, BCPS, ambulatory care, geriatrics, medication therapy management, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store. We've got links to everything there on the site. Uh, if you're not a pharmacist, you're a nurse, uh, maybe a med student, physician, listening to the podcast today. Uh, we've got some clinical resources as well, um, clinical case studies, books, uh, things available on Amazon, and you can go uh, check those out as well. Again, everything, uh, head to meded101.com slash store. Check out what we've got and uh, see if something will uh, fit your needs there. So definitely it helps us keep the, the podcast free uh, for young healthcare professionals, students, and uh, folks uh, of that regard. So let's finish up on fluoxetine and drug interactions. So I would say your primary focus, and generally in practice, my primary focus is CYP2D6. So fluoxetine can inhibit CYP2D6. And what happens on account of this is, A, we can either have higher concentrations of drugs that are metabolized by CYP2D6, or in the setting of a drug like tamoxifen or codeine, those are prodrugs, they require activation by CYP2D6. So essentially by having fluoxetine on board and starting tamoxifen or starting codeine, you're going to get a higher chance of reduced efficacy or treatment failure, however you want to state it there. So really important to remember that prodrugs that need to be activated by CYP2D6, if we've got a CYP2D6 inhibitor like fluoxetine on board, we can lower essentially the effectiveness of those medications. So I would say for the majority of medications, uh, they're not prodrugs. They're going to be broken down by CYP2D6. And if this is the case, we are going to actually raise concentrations. So examples here, uh, aripiprazole, uh, atomoxetine, so that's Stratera used in, in ADHD. Uh, some of the TCAs go through uh, metabolism by CYP2D6. So amitriptyline, Pamelor, 
Uh, bupropion's a, another example uh, that's broken down by, by CYP2D6 as well. So uh, definitely remember any drug that's going to be broken down by CYP2D6, if we've got fluoxetine on board, uh, we're going to potentially raise those concentrations and increase the risk for adverse effects and, and toxicity from those corresponding drugs. Uh, as a from a class perspective with SSRIs, uh, remember you can have antiplatelet activity, you can have uh, serotonergic additive effects, uh, potential toxicity there as well. So those are just a reminder of, of two common um, examples as far as a, a class type of drug interaction. So I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Hopefully you picked up a few clinical pearls. Um, I really try to focus on real life things and, and things you actually see uh, in clinical practice. Uh, if you've enjoyed the show, leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, that's greatly appreciated for all of you who have uh, done that already. Uh, it, it means a lot and it helps us uh, definitely grow the audience. Uh, share us and send us out an email if you're you know, a pharmacy student, nursing student, med student. Uh, share us with your, your classmates, uh, your professors. Uh, use the, the podcast to help augment any uh, studying or, or preparations you, you may be doing there. So um, with that, uh, you can go check out reallifepharmacology.com, snag that free 31-page PDF where I highlight uh, really highly uh, testable stuff and things that show up a lot in clinical practice. So uh, go check that out at reallifepharmacology.com. You get that free simply for subscribing. Uh, we shoot you out weekly uh, emails when we've got a new podcast, let you know what we've got in case it interests you to uh, take a listen. I'm going to sign off for today. Thanks again, Eric Christensen, pharmacist. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.